She is a financial planner and advisor. She's the founder and president of Zinnia Wealth Management. She's also a popular radio show host. There's a way to have the money in the market and have protected growth. This holistic approach will help people get to and through retirement. Absolutely. You have to change the way that you think. It's not about having these double-digit returns anymore. Things are changing, and you have to have an advisor that's keeping up with the changes. Your outcome is going to become very desirable if you have some sort of coach helping you along the way. And our next recipient for the Media and Communications XP, Sharice. 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 Sharice Rivers. Do not have to risk all your money in the market to survive because it's about the retirement dream. Good day. Good midweek day, everyone. Happy, happy Wednesday hump day. I am your host, Sharice Rivers, and welcome to Retirement Coffee Talk, home of Zinnia Wealth Management, where I am here to educate you, hopefully inspire you, and get you to retirement and beyond. Let me give you a little bit of a pregame. We're going to go through a half hour. We're going to start off with a midweek market update. We're going to talk about what's happening in North Central Florida. We're going to get into our Zinnia U, where I'm going to educate you. We're talking about pension maximization, some rules to follow, what Dave Ramsey, Clark Howard saying about it, and what good old Sharice has to say about it. And if you don't have a pension, how to get one. There's a lot of severance packages going out right now. People are jobless, uh, and you're having to retire sooner than expected. So we want to help you keep calm and uh, show you how to retire on. So, okay, let's get started with all the market hype. The hype is the market's hit some all-time highs. How exciting is that? Um, for us, it's exciting. Last week, I said, if we could just hold on a little tighter, we go up a little higher, that'd be a wonderful thing. Remember, what goes up must also come down. Um, actually, as we speak, the market's being a little ripply now and coming down a hair, not drastically. But what is driving the stock market? What stocks? Well, let's look at uh, one of the number ones, Tesla. Tesla is about to be doing a five-to-one split. Anybody excited about that? Woo -woo, put a, a thumbs up if you're excited about that because I certainly am because now people can actually afford to buy Tesla. Uh, yesterday, when I looked earlier, it was at $1,900 a share. You can buy in now. Um, there's some value to that because when the stock split actually splits five to one, what's going to happen? The person who has one stock now has five stocks. It's the same dollar amount, it's the same value, nothing changes. Um, there are a few more perks involved. But I will say this, if you get in and then the stock splits and now everybody across the nation saying, I'm going to buy Tesla because the price is so much lower, then that's going to skyrocket um, returns, right? But then again, who really knows? Because I've seen stock splits where people buy ahead of time and then the stock goes down further. So again, you're timing the market. And as we always say, if you're prepping for retirement, be diversified, have a plan, put it on paper. Don't go alone and buy these stocks on your own. What about good old Apple, four to one split also? So a lot of people are thinking, man, uh, Apple's $462. I don't want to pay $462 for Apple, but they're splitting four to one also. Make sure if you're going to buy any of these types of stocks, you want to do it by August 20th, if I recall. And um, if you want to get in before the split, just remember that. But those are really driving the market. Um, record highs for Target. I mean, who doesn't love Target? Target, our uh, second quarter had hit its record high. And I found out why. Um, a lot of these mom and pop shops, they were forced to shut down where Target was allowed to stay open. And what they didn't do is they were supposed to close down a uh, shopping for like the big items instead of the things that were a necessity. So people kept buying. And so that was that that was some um, great ground for Target because they still sold those types of things, you know, clothes. Uh, those are necessities, sanitizer, tissue paper, but they also sold toys and anything else you can buy in there. So record high. So that's great if you happen to have some Target on, in the market. Um, S&P, what's driving the S&P? We have Amazon. You have all those FANG stocks, Apple, Google. What else we have here? Uh, uh, home builder stocks really are jumping up right now um, a lot of people are starting to want they're wanting to build homes so um because inventory is actually short can you believe that in the real estate market so things to think about there um you know it was interesting on monday the s p went up but the dow jones went down that was on monday so the s p 500 is standard and poor's and it has 500 large cap domestic companies now remember dow jones has a very fractional amount of that in there and so there's only a couple of companies inside that. So if those companies aren't doing good, 
it could go down while the S&P goes up. So remember, if you want to be diversified in what you're doing, if you're going alone and managing your own money, it's definitely a scary time to do so. So remember, always seek a second opinion. Um, it's definitely worth, especially if you're five to 10 years before your retirement and you're getting ready to retire, that retirement red zone, you want to be extra cautious. You don't take too much risk. I know people are getting really excited. They're ready to buy these stocks. But should you be is the question. Can you take the loss when it comes? And, um, but, you know, I have hope. And uh, hope is not a plan, but I do like those stocks. Just if anybody wants to know my opinion, I do like those stocks a whole lot. Okay, let's talk about the fiscal package. So right now, we don't have any stimulus going out, right? And so people are in great hopes that it goes out. Here's the problem. Congress, basically, they're taking a break. They're, the, the session doesn't start back till September 8th. So... Well, here's the problem. Third quarter, right in the third quarter, these small mom and pop stores, gro uh, you know, grocery stores, um, clothing stores, they need the money now. The Congress decided to take a break that they're going to be hurting the whole way till the end of the quarter. And if they don't start getting some sort of new PPP loan to help bail them out, those shops are going to be closed for good. And guess what happens? Those big, big companies like Targets and Publix and, you know, Walmarts, People are going to be shopping there 100% and these small mom and pop competitors are no longer a competitor to them. So, you know, these big companies can scale numbers because they're so big. And so they can float a balance sheet even, even during hard times. So let's just hope for the small businesses. They get some sort of checkout before the end of September when they get back from their uh, Labor Day vacation. Okay, moving on, Trump news. So... Um, Trump said, hey, I want to push this forward. Pelosi said if she has to bring people back before the session's out, she will. I'd be very curious about that. Um, a lot of talk, but um, nobody's really, you know, moving forward. You know, there's another big concern out there is all the um, mail-ins for election. Right now they're working on, you know, possible funding for the U.S. Postal uh, Office. Not enough people working, and they're wondering if the um, election, the cars that we're sending in are going to make it in in time. So that's a really big concern because it's a, a slow in for those um, election. If you're voting, you guys know what I'm talking about. We're voting here soon, November 3rd. Remember that. Don't forget. Don't forget. Um, you can go somewhere and do vote. You can send them in. There's a lot of things you can do. But um, me personally, I'm going to be going in and, and voting. Make sure everybody's getting out and voting. You're, you're help motivating everybody because we need everybody voting this year. Big time. All right, let's talk about Governor DeSantis. Basically, this is new to me. Um, oh, let's talk about uh, coronavirus numbers. It says Florida, as of August 15th, marked its lowest number of new coronaviruses since June. Yes, that's awesome. Emergency room visit. Um have definitely gone down, which is a great thing. Hospital emissions have gone down 60% since July 21st. 20% uh, 6 of the beds are now available. So that is really great news. I did not know that. So lots of potential there. Uh, let's talk about Central Florida. Does anybody know that there's a Disney deal out there? Uh, four nights, $50 a night, and you can go to any of the four um, Walt Disney World resorts. And uh, I just heard that the place is dead as a doornail and a wait, the waits were 20 minutes long, but you have to wear your mask. And during the summertime, it's really hot. And so it's, uh, you might want to wait till October, but you have to use those, those four day park hoppers by, I think like December 17th, but it might be worth it if you uh, feel like you won't catch the COVID, right? So something to think about. Uh, also tourists in Florida dropped 60.5%. 60.5%. So our hospitality industry is just hurting. It's amazing to me how stocks are hitting all time new highs, but we don't have people visiting Florida. These companies, these stocks that have all time new highs, they don't have the balance sheets to back up why the stock is that high. So this V shaped recovery, you know, the market goes down, it goes back up straight up. It shows a V shaped recovery on the stock market, but the economy is so far from a V-shaped recovery. So don't, don't think the stock market is doing what the economy is doing. And could it potentially create a possible bubble? I wouldn't put it past anybody that we could probably be forming a bubble. Let's hope it doesn't, 
but let's make sure we're planning if there is a bubble or if there is in the bubble and remember the election on the horizon i know you guys are all nervous about that a lot of you are sitting in cash and you're thinking this election i don't know which direction it's going to go i'm going to sit in cash don't sit in cash cash there is a way to have protected growth still make money if the market goes down because the whoever is president um you know makes it go down then hey listen we're not going to lose money so we like that for retirees only so really for that's a conversation for retirees so just remember that oh I went on a tangent. Florida Gators, whoop, whoop, they just started their season and started practicing on Monday. So, so far, far games are going. Um, you know, we have a different setup for our games and who we're going to be playing, that kind of stuff. But at least game is on for SEC. So, we're super excited about that. So, all I have to say, if I'm watching a football game, I see one of the players coughing on the sidelines. I'm going to be a little bit worried. I'm sure a lot of you will, too. That might shut down the whole season. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. Okay, I forgot to announce this. We're going to do our Zinnia um, trivia. So, trivia, four questions. Two questions came from last week's episode, and then two fun ones. So, let's start with Zinnia U trivia. Now, if you answer all four questions right, I have to let you know nobody got them wrong uh, right last week. So, unfortunately, the, the one... We had one person get three right, but not four. If you get all four right, we're going to send a check for $200 to your church or charity of choice. We got to get all four right. So here we go. Zinnia U. Which of the following is true of Roth IRAs? A, growth is tax-free. B, it is funded with after-tax dollars. C, there is uh, income limits on of how much you can contribute each year. Or D, all of the above. And we talk about Roths a lot. You guys should get that one pretty easy. Number two, from last Zinnia U, at what age did I say you should consider converting your IRA to a Roth IRA? Either in segments, little pieces, big chunks. If you're going to do it, what age is it? Is it A, 65, B, um, in your 20s, C, 59 and a half, or there was no recommended age? Okay, question three. Here's a fun one. Which 80s movie was Al Alan Rickman's first feature film role? Was it Die Hard, Robin Hood, I love that movie, Sense and Sensibility, or D, Truly, Madly, Deeply? Unfortunately, I didn't see that one. I wonder if that's even a movie. Okay, number four, who is Sharice's favorite Gator all-time player? It's so hard because it's really two, and if they're both watching today, one of them's going to be very upset with me, but there's only one. And is it A, Chris Leak? B, Steve Spurrier, C, Tim Tebow, or D, Danny Warfel. And you know, I do donate to all the different types of charities over at Gator Nation. So this might be a hard one for y'all, but I'm going to give you a tip. You've seen them recently. Okay, hope that helps. Remember, if you get all four right, put it in the little prompter there where it has a little text button. Um, and then if you get all four right, we're, send, we're sending checks. So I started answering those questions. All right, now this is where we kind of get into the dirt here and we start talking about Zinnia U. This is our education section. Today we're going to be talking about pensions. A lot of people have been forced to retire. A lot of people are getting options to take early retirement and you have some decisions to make. A lot of people have pensions where you can take an income stream for life or you can take a buyout option. So we want to talk about which one's better, which one's not, and um, give you some tips because you want to get this one right because it could really hurt you if you do not, and you don't understand the rules of engagement. So let's start with the pros and the cons of the buyout versus the income. So we're going to start with, um, if you say, okay, Sharice, I'm going to take the company's income stream and get it for the rest of my life. I never have to worry about a thing. I just know I get that paycheck. Why people do that is because it helps you budget e easier right? Because you know what's coming in. So you know if you can write a check, you know, 12 months in advance to go pay for a trip, right? Which we're not going on right now. So that's one thing. The second thing is that it's a lifetime payment. You can never outlive it. They, you, know, you don't have to manage the money. They're going to give you this check. And as long as you, if you lived 120 years old, they still actually pay it out to you. Also, another pro for maybe taking the income with the, the company that you're working for some of them say, if you take it, you're also going to get insurance with them the whole time. So those are definitely viable and really good reasons to take it. But what are the cons? So there's some worry on the front 
because a lot of these pension companies have over abused and used the, the, the system. And so they became more risky and, be, and leveraged the money a little bit differently that we have to find out, first of all, is the company stable? Is that company, is there pain, is there the pain ability to pay that paycheck for the rest of your life actually there? So are there any concerns today financially or did they have any financial hardships in the past that could really compound moving forward? So stability is a big one. There's a website you can go to to see if they're on this list of where, ooh, they're going to have a problem um, paying out benefits. And so usually those types of companies are saying, hey, let's go ahead and give them the buyout. Um, also, the, the company itself, what sector are they in? Are they a really risky sector? That can make all the difference also. And so just know this. If you do take that income stream for life with the company, the government does have something called the PBGC, Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. We've been talking about it for years, and it does say if the company does go belly up, we're going to give you some of those dollars, but you're not getting all of those dollars. So, for example, let's talk about Delta years ago. I remember I had somebody come into my office. Uh, they were a, a pilot. They were going to retire. They decided to wait a couple of years, and they were going to get a $100,000 pension from Delta, and they didn't retire soon enough. And then what happens, they had to work another five years because the pension got cut in half. You know, they only got 50,000. So when you're expecting an income stream for life from your stable, supposedly stable company, who's supposed to be a big name, but they had some financial troubles because of management, you know, you don't want that lifestyle change when you are in retirement. I mean, that's a hardship. And it's really deciding whether or not you're going to retire earlier or later. Um, because if you decide to wait a couple of years, like this client did, it hurt him for a very long run. Sometimes it's better to take your money and run and say, you know what? I'm out of here. So that's the income. You could take it for life, which is a big deal. Here, this is another column that I don't like, um, but it is a big deal. If you die and you don't take a spousal benefit, nobody gets the money. Let's say you have a million dollars in this pension plan. I, I watched this happen to somebody in 2010. They took the income. It was like nine. It was nine hundred thousand dollar buyout where they could have moved it to an IRA. They took the income. He did not take spousal benefits, and he did not buy life insurance to cover the wife in case he passed away. So the wife, um, where she was financially set up, is now financially destitute because they didn't plan properly. So if you pass away, you don't take spousal benefit. A spousal benefit means you didn't take the single income for the rest of your life. You took income for your life and your spouse's wife, so nobody could outlive that money, right? So you have to make these, these hard decisions. Now, I'm going to say, if you decide to take um, single income, but you wanna make sure your spouse has a few bucks when you pass away, you're gonna to wanna to buy life insurance. So you have to do the math on this. We talk about do the math, do the math, do the math. You know, I'm not a math magician, I'm a mathematician, remember that. And so, we can't do the math if you don't come in and let us sit down with you, at least talk with you over the phone. There is a cost to insurance in doing a joint income. So let's just say you're going to get $40,000 a year by doing single income, but by taking a spousal benefit, so your spouse always had income, let's say it went to, let's just say, 35000 Okay, so you, you took $5,000 hit so that the spouse always had money. Now we go and we do the math and we calculate that $5,000, can we take that extra $5,000 if you would have taken the single income and put it into a life insurance policy? And so we do the math on that. And sometimes it actually makes sense, but sometimes it actually doesn't. But here's the thing is what if your spouse passes away and you took this $5,000 hit because you, you weren't sure who was going to pass away first. That's very costly if you're living 30 and 40 years in retirement and the spouse passes away early. Here's the beauty about taking single income if you're going to do that and buying the life insurance is that if the spouse does pass away, you can drop that life insurance policy. You don't have to pay that $5,000 a month every, every, um, I'm sorry, annually every year. And, or if you decide, Hey, I'm going to keep paying it because I wanted to go to my kids. So I want to leave a legacy. You can. So these are um, pretty hard decisions, but they have to be very smart decisions. You want to get it right the first time. So that is, if you take, the income from the employer. Now, let's just say now you retired or you took the severance package or they've cut you loose and they're going to also and or give you a buyout. So now you can get a chunk of money. 
right? So you can take that chunk of money and it doesn't matter what age you are, you can roll it to an IRA, correct? And you have no taxes and no penalties to, to do so. And you can create a private pension with a, a company. Like we do this for people all day long where we're creating income streams, just like the pension, maybe not as high, maybe a little lower, but by doing that, you have access to your dollar. So if you passed away, your, your, your wife would get those dollars. If both of you passed away, your kids or your beneficiaries would get those dollars. So you didn't work all these years for nothing. So if you want to have control of your money, I certainly recommend you take the buyout, you roll to an IRA. We can still prepare you an income stream for life you never have to worry about for you and your spouse. But now we have a higher um, likelihood of leaving money to beneficiaries. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons of the buyout. So I stay on track because I go on tangents, as you all know. Pros is that it's flexible. You can take that money, you can invest some in the market, you can go get an annuity if you want to and go get an income stream from life. So you can split it up and be diversified. So I just want to let you guys know, I said that big, dirty, hairy word called annuity. Remember, when you have retired and you do take that pension from your employer, all those are doing is they're putting your money into an annuity and then the insurance company is giving you an income for life. So that's all it is. It's an annuity. Who would have known? And so you can do that in the private world and have a little bit more control. So you have more flexibility to take the lump sum. Um, you can leave more money for your family um, because if you, you take some income from some chunk of that money and you leave the rest to invest, you, you, know, you got some more money to possibly lose. Unless you become the big spender and you're ever spending, of course, that's, that's different. So control is a big thing. You can move it to an IRA, no taxes, no penalty. To me, that's the way to do it. Um, but here's some here's some cons. So I've got to be fair. So if you take the lump sum and roll it to an IRA with somebody locally that you want to work with, um, you have to be careful. You don't spend it all. So you've got to be pretty smart with your money and and not run out of money. So now you're kind of in control. You are now your pension, your own pension manager. You got to figure out how to make this lump sum of money last forever. And that's why you go to a retirement shop um, where they're working with. Not 35 year olds, but 50 and 60 year olds all day long. You know, I'm not sitting with a 35 year old at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm sitting with typically 50 to 67 year olds at 10 o'clock in the morning and also at four o'clock in the afternoon because that's all I do is I specialize in working with retirees. But I will say that's up to your advisor to help make sure that you don't overspend and you're, you're taking a certain amount of money so you don't run out of money, right? Um, so, and then also one of the cons is that if you're going to manage the money yourself and not work with a local advisor, it's going to take careful management, right? Of, you know, market ups and downs, the ebbs and flows in the market. So you can lose your shorts in the stock market if you put it all in there. And it's not guaranteed to last a lifetime if you don't, pen, you don't create your own private pension. So pros and cons, you know, we have to do the math. I say this all day long, do the math, do the math. We put the calculator out on the table. We figure out what you want, your needs. We look at your social security. We look at your savings, your liabilities. We do a total calculation. We put it on paper. You're going to feel very confident on whether or not you should take the buyout with your employer or take the income stream for life. Now, I did look up some things. Let's see what Dave Ramsey says. I'm just going to read it because he's, he's saying the same thing I am. He said he recommends a lump sum most of the time. He says 90% of the time, You'd be right to roll it into an IRA, just like Sharice said, and good growth stock mutual funds and creating a possible income plan on um, using other resources and vehicles. So that's a big one. So that's Dave Ramsey telling you that. He says, um, when you die, your pension dies and it goes away, right? And so, and if your spouse dies because you took a spousal benefit, it goes away, it goes nowhere. So we're not a big fan of that, no, neither is Dave Ramsey. So I talked about this in my radio show a couple weeks ago. Clark Howard talked about the 6% rule. Clark Howard says, listen, if the buyout you're going to get is when you multiply that by 6%, if the income stream the employer is going to give you is 6% of that buyout, then he's saying maybe it's better to take the income stream from the employer. And that's the math I actually do with you because I do agree with that. And the only way we would say don't take the income at that time is if you say, Sharice, I don't need all that income, and I want to leave a money as an inheritance, as a wealth transfer to my beneficiary. So that's when we might really start creating a plan and getting very creative. So again, it is not cookie cutter. I have to let you all know that. It takes serious planning. We use um, retirement software to make sure that 
you know, have as much of a tax burden as much as possible in case we need to do some conversions or contributing to Roths. We want to be very tax efficient in the future. We want to make sure we have an income for life. We want to make sure, hey, maybe we add a few Tesla and Apple stocks to our portfolio. You also want maybe some active management. Remember, diver being diversified is, is in throwing your money in the market, having the advisor tell you, hey, we're going to make 7% every year and, you know, we're going to have a couple more home runs. That is not being diversified. Being diversified is having buckets of money and turning on these different switches at each time so that you can keep up with inflation, so that you have an emergency fund, and so that you never have to change your lifestyle while you're in retirement. So just definitely remember that. Come see us for that second opinion review on pension maximization, especially if you're getting ready to take one. You have to make some decisions because I had somebody calling into my office and said, Sharice, I've never seen you. I've heard you on the radio. I am scrambling because I just um, found out they were forcing me to retire. He was 62 years old. She said, Sharice, I would have wished I would have at least seen you ahead of time because now I don't know what to do. He said it's emotional, it's psychological, and it came out of the blue. What I find out most of the time, though, once I run the numbers, you know, everybody's so worried about do I have enough? Do I have to go back to work um, or do I have to get another job? What I find out most of the time, because we did the math, you came and sat with us and we implemented this income plan, is that you can retire and you don't have to go back to work. But if you do, I will let you know. I'll say you got to work one more year. You got to go get a part-time job for three years. I will let you know that is my job as a financial advisor your local fiduciary here in North and Central Florida. So anyways, we have some information on our website, zinniawealth.com. We have a bunch of guides, download it for free, even the little red book to retirement there. Okay, we are gonna finish up with a, a travel uh, trip, one of my most favorite places and the local discount. So we always like to end the segment with, since we're not flying and we're not in trains and we're not in planes and we're not going on cruises, local places that we can drive to uh, because that's basically what's going to be happening probably for a good another six to 12 months. So my most favorite place, I always say this, I always say my most favorite place. I just love traveling is Cedar Key. If you haven't been to Cedar Key, this is a must from, you know, the Ocala Gainesville area, depending on which direction you go, it's a two hour drive, but it is so worth it. It's the cutest town with the, the nicest charm and you have these small mom and pop restaurants and um, stores for shopping and they have festivals there, but I'm going to give you some tips here when you go. So if you go and you're visiting, let me just tell you what we have written here. Um, it is uh, an island of cities off the northwest coast of Florida uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, about an 80 minute drive from Gainesville, basically a little bit longer for Ocala people. It is um, a grouping of 13 offshore islands designed, um, designated for wildlife areas. Uh, you can go fishing there. You can go scalloping there during scalping season, which is right now. Um, they have a neat museum. Uh, if you're under 12 years old, it's absolutely free. Anybody else, it's uh, $3. It's the journey of John Muir at Cedar Key. So that's a neat place. Um, they have some exhibits and they have some villages where they have some old towns. So it's so much fun. I just love You guys know me. I'm all about that old charm, old towns and where to stay when you go. So I stay at this really cute place. I hope I don't ruin this for myself. It's called Aunt Fanny's Little Cottages. It's right there in town. The cutest little oldest old school house. It's probably 120 years old. But if you're looking for something a little bit more updated, there is a, uh, it's called Harbor Master Suites. Um, so it's right there in Cedar Key. And what I like about the place is if you stay seven nights, the seventh night is free. So that's why we brought that to the table because I thought they had the best deal. Now, for a restaurant, if you're going to go to a restaurant, there's 1842 Daily Grind and Mercantile. Basically, it's a mom and pop shop, cafe, breakfast, sandwiches. They are famous. Okay, you've got to do this. They're famous for their frozen chocolate-covered key lime pie. Oh, it just melts in my mouth. Some people don't like the tartness, but if you have just the right chocolate and just the right graham pepper crust, it's so good. So anyway, do you know me? I get off on tangents on trips and food, one of my most favorite pastimes. So I hope you visit it. It's worth it. Um, go there for a night, maybe two. You can even just drive there for a day. It's quite fabulous. Okay, last but not least, local discounts. CVS says they are offering 20% off purchases of $80 or more. Great deal. I'm going to CVS. Um, you have There's a promo code. It's called SAVE20. So SAVE20, and you can get that discount online, which is wonderful. And last but not least, Home Depot. Love that stock. Home Depot uh, basically is having an 11% rebate on any in-store purchase. And so when they give you the rebate, it's going to come back to you in a gift card, of course, but great deal. 
You guys, we talked a lot. I hope you got a lot of information about what to do with these buyouts and these severance packages. Um, and remember, this is housed on the Zinnia Wealth Facebook page. And if you ever need to go back to it or share it with a friend that's getting ready to retire or is forced to retire, send this to them because it might really help them. So again, thank you so much for being here today. Go to ZinniaWealth.com. Um, you can schedule a 15 minute call and we can talk to you. Uh, uh, it's on our Calendly on the website. If you have some questions, you want more one-on-one -on -one conversation, uh, it'll prompt you for to download the Little Red Book to Retirement. It's absolutely free. I highly engage and want you to download it. It's fantastic and it costs nothing. And if you want a second opinion, that's what I'm here for. And uh, as always, I'm here to educate, inspire, and get you to retirement and beyond. So live by design and not by default. And we'll see you here next Wednesday at 3.30. She is a financial planner and advisor. She's the founder and president of Zinnia Wealth Management. She's also a popular radio show. There's a way to have the money to market and have protected growth. This holistic approach will help people get to and through retirement. Absolutely. You have to change the way that you think. It's not about having these double digit returns anymore. Things are changing and you have to have an advisor that's keeping up with the changes. Your outcome is going to become very desirable if you have some sort of coach helping you along the way. And our next recipient for the Media and Communications XP, Sharice. 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 You do not have to risk all your money in the market to survive because it's about the retirement dream.